this supermarket in Elkhart. Um, and you started to see people exit the store um, in a rapid pace. Two people gunned down in what police are calling a random act of violence. 24 hours later, candles and crosses have replaced police tape and squad cars. As investigators try to figure out what caused yet another mass shooting, this time in our small town. Now, Michiana turns to remembering the lives lost. She's a great person. And lives saved by swift police action. Thankfully, for the quick response of the Elkhart City Police Department. ABC 57 News is also learning new details about the shooter. I feel like something was interesting about chemical imbalance. What one doctor has to say about signs of violence on his Facebook page. A special edition of ABC 57 News at 11 starts right now. Covering South Bend, Elkhart, and all of Michiana, this is ABC 57 News at 11. It's so surreal like, to know. I mean, I was just at work yesterday and everything was normal. A sense of normalcy is trying to be restored in Elkhart tonight. Join us in prayer and remembrance. That's the phrase on that sign that replaces much of the investigators in bright blue and red lights just 24 hours ago. Here's a live look at the Martins on Bristol Street in Elkhart tonight. ABC 57 News has devoted a whole day of news coverage to this story, and tonight we are still learning new information about that deadly shooting. Good evening, I'm Brian Dorman. And I'm Kim Chappell. Let's walk through what we know so far. Police say this man, 22-year-old Sean Bayer, walked into Martin's supermarket at 9.30 last night on Bristol Street in Elkhart and gunned down two people before he was shot and killed by police. The two women killed were 20-year-old Crystal Dykes and 44-year-old Rochelle Godfrey. Police believe that he was holding a third victim hostage before they closed in on him. ABC 57 has brand new information into our newsroom tonight about a vigil planned for those two victims. There will be a candlelight vigil at the same Martins this Saturday at 8 o'clock and the public is welcomed and encouraged to attend. Also, ABC 57 has put in a Freedom of Information Act request for those 911 tapes from yesterday's shooting. So far, our first request has been denied because those are still being used in that active investigation. Also tonight, Indiana State Police are asking this of the public. And if they think they have any information that may be helpful to us, um, no matter how slight it might be, that they please contact the Indiana State Police at the Bremen Post. And ABC 57 does have team coverage of the aftermath of this deadly supermarket shooting from how friends are planning to remember those victims to a look at the shooter's Facebook page. But first tonight. Yeah, it looks like more snow still across the area. Let's do a quick track on some of the snow we have coming down right now on ABC 57. First warning Doppler radar, including this batch downtown South Bend over to Granger right now. Ashland Street over towards Park Lane. This is all going to be shifting its way off towards the east into Constantine 1137. White Pigeon 1139. More tracking coming up. ABC 57 special coverage of the deadly supermarket shooting continues. Tonight we're learning more about the victims of this senseless violence. Our team coverage begins with ABC 57's Rachel Brown. And Rachel, it looks like people are already starting to pay their tribute out there to those two women who died. Kim, that's right. We were here as one emotional Martins employee left candles. Several other people have come by tonight leaving flowers. They say they all felt compelled to come by and pay their respects to the victims and the families affected by this senseless tragedy. Yellow tape still stretches across the parking lot of the Martins on Bristol Street in Elkhart, now accompanied by a sign that reads, Join us in prayer and remembrance. All to honor victims Rochelle Godfried and Crystal Dykes who were gunned down inside this store Wednesday night. Friends of Crystal say this loss is heartbreaking. Crystal was a really good girl. She was very nice, very kind in high school, and she got along with everybody. She was very popular. Everybody loved her. Crystal was stocking the shelves when the shooter opened fire. She died on the scene. Now candles lie near the entrance of the supermarket. One store employee who got off work at 6 last night described how difficult the last 24 hours have been. It's so surreal like, to know. I mean, I was just at work yesterday and everything was normal. And her mother says she does not wish the fear of knowing whether your child is alive or dead on any parent. And as a parent to find out that your child is alive, you feel almost guilty over the joy. Normally, I'm here after 10 o'clock every, almost every night. And for some reason, uh, I just felt like I needed to wait and go the next day. And then I find out this happened. So to me, God warned me not to come. 
Henderson, who was a regular at Martin, says he's now planning a candlelight vigil this Saturday at 8 o'clock in front of the store. He's hoping everyone will come show their support for the victims, their families, and the entire Elkhart community. And right now, anyone can add to this small but meaningful memorial at Martin's. I honestly thought there would be more flowers and, and more candles, and I felt like it was the right thing to do because there are souls that are gone now. <laughs> And friends of Crystal Dykes are hoping to put together a charity basketball game at Elkhart Central High School to help raise money for the family during this incredibly difficult time. Reporting live in Elkhart, Rachel Brown, ABC 57 News. And as Rachel just mentioned, their 44-year-old Rochelle Godfrey, a mom of two boys, was one of the victims. Godfrey was there shopping when the 22-year-old opened fire. And our family is trying to process what has actually happened. ABC 57 News talked with her brother today, Vince Bosnack, says that his sister loved life and more than anything, loved her two sons. She um, always stayed positive and, and always on the go. So, and I think she, she related that to her, her, um, her kids. She had two sons and, um, and uh, I think uh, she had a real love for life and and pass that on. He says he wishes more people were as vibrant as his younger sister, and now he hopes this is a lesson everyone can learn from. And new at 11 tonight, Martin CEO Robert Bartles talked with ABC 57 this afternoon about that emotional incident. In a statement, he praised first responders for their courage and ability to ensure the safety of others in that area. He also said he, the company would find answers. In our 67 years, we've not faced something like this. We will do everything that we can over the coming days on behalf of the folks that count on us. We'll face our losses together and we will find answers over time. And Martins is providing counseling to all employees that want it free of charge. Well, here today, Elkhart Mayor Dick Moore reacted to the shooting at a press conference. He says a shock was sent through Michiana. Obviously, uh, we have witnessed had happened a senseless and tragic act of violence that has taken the lives of three people and sent a shock through our entire community. And lawmakers today, like Governor Mike Persky, also made formal statements calling Elkhart's police department courageous. And tonight, ABC 57 is digging deeper into Bear's history, who he is, and what may have led him to go on last night's violent shooting spree. Here's a look at him one more time, 22 year old Sean Walter Bear of Elkhart. And here's a look at some images and posts captured from Bear's Facebook page. According to his page, Bear was a member of a group called the Juggalos, a group just recently recognized by the FBA, FBI as a official violent gang. Our team coverage continues with ABC 57's Marissa Kirby, who talked with a psychiatrist about Bear's Facebook page. And Marissa, what did he tell you tonight? Kim, he tells me these are all clear signs of mental health issues. Now, we do know from court orders of Bear's previous criminal records that he was asked to attend Oak Lawn Psychiatric Center in Goshen. I feel like something was interesting about the chemical imbalance. That's what child and adolescent psychiatrist Dr. Gonzaga thinks about Sean Bear. He believes behind the Martin supermarket shooter was a man who may have been mentally ill. I took a look at what appears to be the Facebook page of Sean Bear. The man police believe killed two people in an Elkhart Martins last night. One of his likes is the controversial band Insane Clown Posse, a band whose lyrics describe murder, cannibalism, and dismemberment. Followers of this band are called Juggalos, and on his Facebook page, Bear identified himself as an Elkhart Juggalo. In 2013, the FBI released a report classifying Juggalos as a violent street gang based on the group's criminal activity and violent behavior. While these facts are hard to ignore when trying to piece together the puzzle of last night's shooting, Dr. Gonzaga says just because Bear may have listened to the insane clown posse doesn't mean he's a violent criminal. I don't think all the people who listen to them or watch them are necessarily going to act on them. 
Dr. Gonzaga says Bear's violent behavior in Martins was a result of two things, his external influences and his internal health. As a general sense, just uh, having exposure to viol violence without having any other predispositions doesn't necessarily mean that that person will act on them or will have an effect on their brain. He says mental illness is like any other health condition. It can be treated with the proper care. I feel the, the more awareness we have, the, uh, hopefully the more services they can have and uh, hopefully you know, prevent this kind of uh, incidents. It's important to note that Dr. Gonzaga has not treated Sean Bear. We simply asked for his expert opinion based on the facts given to us. Live in South Bend, Marissa Kirby, ABC 57 News. It's not just the victim's family distraught over this tragedy, but the shooter's family as well. ABC 57 News McDonough continues our special team coverage with that side of the story tonight. She joins us live in the neighborhood where the young man lived just two miles away from the crime scene. Jesse. Ryan, the family of Sean Bear is obviously distraught over this tragedy. His cousin actually took to her Facebook page to remind everyone they lost a loved one, too. Now, the post reads, I'm sorry for the victim's families, but people need to think about the shooter's family, too. I loved him very much, and although the police weren't wrong for what they did, and he was wrong for what he did, he still had a family that loved him very much. Now, she goes on to say that we, too, lost a loved one. And remember, there are three families, not just two. Now, Bar's, Bear's cousin also said in a previous post, simply... Little Sean, I will always miss you and love you. Live in Elkhart, Jesse McDonough, ABC 57 News. ABC 57 first broke this story last night at 10 o'clock, and we had live coverage for you and your family around the clock starting last night at 11 again, starting at 5 o'clock this morning. We have assigned nine reporters to this story today. Each has been working their sources and following up on leads as we continue to dig into what led up to the shooting. Continue to trust ABC 57 News for your continued team coverage. You can also track the very latest developments all the time at abc57.com, Facebook, and Twitter. And we're also tracking more snow across the area right now on ABC 57 First Warning Doppler Radar. It's on the light side, but it's moving through Cassopolis to Wajak right now, heading up towards Vandalia, 1122, Marcellus at 1145. More tracking when we come back in 60 seconds. Live coverage like no other. ABC 57 News and Live View go live anywhere, anytime.